Hi there. Welcome to the Nature Journal Workshop. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, let's take a look at the power of adding numbers in your Nature Journal notes. We've got three languages which we use to describe and record our observations. We've got words, pictures, and numbers. Those numbers are really, really powerful. When you find the numbers in your observations, you are using a kind of specificity, a kind of of exact language that will get you to think and make observations in a different way. When you record observations with numbers, it forces you to be really precise. And this is very valuable. So let's take a look at some observations that I've been making this afternoon, and we'll see how I can include more numbers on the page with what I'm doing. Let's go there now. Today we're experiencing a really intense heat wave and all the birds are responding to it. Where I uh, see little warblers and other birds around, everybody has their mouth open. Um, birds do this thing called guler fluttering where they, it looks like kind of, kind of like panting where they cool their body by letting air in and out of their throat. They're also in these strange postures with their wings up away from their body to allow better air circulation and their feathers just sleeked down on top of their body. I found a little warbler that has succumbed to the heat. It was lying dead right next to a little puddle. And I, I picked it up and made some observations about it in my journal. I've been drawing it. I've been writing some observations. And I'm just now starting to, to add some numbers in. And I wanted to, to point out the way that 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 adding the numbers in is going to help force me to think in a different way, in a really interesting way. The easiest way to start to add numbers in your observations is to start counting things. So I've got tail feathers. How many tail feathers does it have? So I took the tail, I spread the tail, and it's got six tail feathers on each side. So I made a little drawing of that, and I've got six and six on either side. I spread the wings and I counted and drew the feathers and the patterns that I saw up in there. So this is a um, one way of starting to, to, to find those numbers. I'm counting feathers, you know, it's down here, the number of primary feathers, the number of covert feathers. Um, all those are parts that I've counted. So you can count things that can be petals, that can be numbers of stamen on a flower, that can be numbers of leaves on a branch, number of, of, of birds in a tree, whatever it is, just directly counting things is a great strategy to do. Another thing that I can do is to start to measure things. So I carry with me a little ruler. This is a ruler that has inches on one side and it's got centimeters on the other. Scientists find that using centimeters is so much easier than using inches. Um, because centimeters are divided into tens, so there's, um, there's millimeters, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten millimeters in each centimeter, right? You've got tens that are then in groups of ten. It's a much simpler system to use, and also the size of these units ends up being really, really practical for measuring a lot of things. So I'm going to be measuring my little bird here. And what I do is I just sort of try to think of places on its body that are, 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 are where there, there's a kind of clear landmarks. So I'm going to go from its little bird wrist out to the tip of its wing. And that is 59 almost. 60 cent millimeters. Yeah. There, there. 
if you nine. All right, so what I do is I'm gonna show on my on my drawing from this little point in here, this little point in here, I'm gonna draw a line along those two, and I'm going to write that this is 59 mm for millimeters. Another kind of clear measurement that I can make is just the, the length of its foot here. So I'm going to measure its tarsus here. Oops, that's the inches. I don't want that. I want, so let me sew two, the wrist there, out to the heel. That is... Twenty four millimeters. So this from here down to here, that's twenty four millimeters. It's interesting. I wonder how long I made it in my picture. I tried to do that life size. That is about twenty. Do one more measurement here, make sure that I am. No, whoa. 20, 21 sorry, not 24. I'm dyslexic, um, and so I always have to double check my numbers and spelling. Um, this is 20, 21 millimeters. Maybe it'd be smart of me to redo this measurement just to be sure. There. I got the same thing. So that was 59. Um, what about from the back of the head to the tip of the beak? Um, back of the head. It's a little bit kind of a rough measurement because I'm going to call that 20. 28. So <clears throat> from the back of the head to the tip of the beak, that's 28 millimeters. Double check my work. Still getting the same thing. So you see, I've just put in some measurements. Um, I've put in um, I'm counting. Um, I wish I actually had a little scale and could weigh this little bird. I wonder how much, um, how much of the bird's body like this is, is water. Um, this thing must have just been so thirsty. It's such dry, hot, hot, hot day. Poor little thing. I guess I should say I'm making an assumption about that that's the way that it died. Um, and when I am done exploring it, um, I am going to um, go back and just be very careful about washing my hands. And I'll be taking this bird and just leaving it underneath a bay tree here in the forest to decompose in the forest. It's a beautiful little animal. Finding this got me running around and uh, with a big pan of water and uh, made a few puddles for birds out today and found that very quickly warblers were coming down and using those. Gorgeous little animal. But that's just a, a, a few thoughts about the ways that you can start to use numbers. Start to use numbers in your field notes to make more accurate, uh, more precise observations. You notice this, this leg up here, that feels a little bit long. But once I've got some measurements um, there in my journal page, it really takes care of all of that because those numbers will lock that in for me. So your challenge is to start making a journal page, 
And on this page, what I want you to do is to just be intentional about trying to find things that you can count, things that you can measure, and put those observations into your journal. So start to use numbers. Start to The more you look for them, you're going to find that you can find numbers all over the place. And the better you get at finding numbers, the better you're going to get at using this third system for your note taking. Recommend as a tool again, a little metric ruler. And let's see what we can get. The subject can be anything that you're looking at. You know, if you're studying a leaf, you can measure the leaf. Um, if you are um, studying berries on a bush, you can count the berries on the bush. Um, you're going to find that when you start really paying attention to those numbers, though, the level of precision in your nature journal goes way up. Let's see what we can do. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time. I'm John Muir Laws, and this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.